Amos Fortune Free Man is the 1951 biography of African Prince Amos Fortune by American author Elizabeth Yates. Based on secondary sources detailing the life of the tribal prince of the Atmanshire, it tells the story of his capture by American slavers and transportation to America. Upon landing in the United States, Amos was sold to the Copeland family and struck a deal with Caleb Copeland to earn his freedom. Amos spent most of his life trying to become free, not succeeding until old age. An important work of literature about the triangle trade and the American plundering and exploitation of Africa and its people, Amos Fortune, Free Man vindicates the struggles of those slaves who still fought for their liberation after having their old lives ripped away. The book begins in the early 1700s. Amos Fortune is born in 1710 into the Atmanshire, in an African village. He is the son of the tribe's chief, given the name Atmun, and celebrated as the newborn prince. Atmun grows up in the mostly happy and peace-seeking tribe until a slave ship full of American colonists lands nearby. The slavers kill his father and proceed to take the survivors aboard their ship, the White Falcon, which is en route to New England. They give him an American name, Amos, and sell him on the auction block to Caleb Copeland. The Copeland family treats Amos with kindness, outside the fact that they keep him as a slave. Still, Amos refuses to accept that he is a slave, resolving to find a way to become free. He bargains with Caleb to earn his freedom by working exceptionally hard. However, when Amos is about 30, Caleb dies before the deal is complete, as a result, their deal is rendered void. Instead, he is resold into servitude under Ichabod Richardson. Luckily, Richardson is also a decent man. He teaches Amos how to work as a tanner, a highly sought-after trade skill. After four years working for Richardson, Amos is finally able to purchase his freedom. He falls in love with a slave named Lily and helps her buy her freedom. Lily dies just one year later, but Amos finds comfort in the fact that she died a free woman. He goes on to marry Violet, a woman in her twenties, and helps her buy her daughter's freedom. They move to the town of Jaffrey, New Hampshire, there Amos opens a tanning store. He cultivates a successful business, hoping to one day buy land and build a home for his family. One day, Amos encounters Lois, a single mother who fears that her children will be taken from her. When Amos decides to give her financial support, Violet gets angry and steals his money. Enraged, Amos climbs empty Monadnock, seeking a message from God. He remains until he receives a message from God telling him to forgive his wife. He descends the mountain, and when he returns home, receives an apology and an explanation from Violet. She explains that she wanted to prevent him from giving money to Lois because she refuses to provide for her own children. Against his altruistic instincts, Amos takes Violet's advice. When Amos reaches old age, he finally saves enough money to buy a plot of land. He builds a house and a barn where he can continue practicing his trade. He dies a free man in Jaffrey, New Hampshire, at the turn of the 19th century. Amos Fortune Free man celebrates the African prince's persistent endeavor to overcome his bondage and lay claim to individual liberty in a deeply unjust American society. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.